cold. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of her, why are you running from me? The first question that comes to mind each time she turns her back on me. Rigid and cool to the touch, her heart had ice around it. She put it in the deepest, darkest hole and dared anyone to try and fetch it. A man that appreciates a challenge took this one on head first, and with little bruising, I retrieved it. The red, barely recognizable organ was lifeless. Day by day, I nurtured it, nurtured her, and eventually, it began to beat again. Not just for anyone, but for me. Its revival was life's greatest reward. The victory didn't last very long. My lack of experience with handling something so precious led me to make rookie mistakes, ones that cost me her heart and mine too. Different. That's what I believed him to be. Who sent you after my heart? It's the question that plagued me each time he set out on my path. His pockets were stuffed and his accounts were limitless, affording him luxuries that not everyone had when he came to me. He didn't flinch at the notion that he had to pay to play. It enticed him. That was my type. He was my type. But he knew no boundaries. His quest commenced the second our eyes met. My body hypnotizing him and everyone else in the room around us. Sadly, they were all a blur. All I saw was him. Tenacity was his specialty. He was as confident as he was persistent, tireless in his efforts to retrieve the one part of me that I buried for safekeeping. And once he had it in his grasp, like every other man I shamelessly given it to, he crushed it. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophile's Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile. So, let's jump right into this thing. Sorry, let me make sure my mic is right. My mic sounds nice. Give y'all a, ooh, a little ASMR as I take a drink. All right, baby, we are here for law. <sighs> I'm scared, child, but let's jump right on into this thing. So, of course, um... Where do we leave off? You know, Ledge and Halo, they're married. They're working on baby number two. You know, everybody's married and, you know, having children and basically doing the quote unquote right thing. And then we have Law, who is, which, okay, let me, uh, let me go back, go back, go back. Because I have to eat my word. Well, no, do I have to eat my words? Because uh, technically I was right. Because I said, I hope. He wouldn't end up with the baby mama, and he didn't, but they do have a baby together. That's how it starts off. Him in the hospital with the on-again, off-again ex that he just cannot stop sleeping with, and he has a son, but of course the family doesn't know, and he has no interest in telling them right away because he feels like he screwed up. Like I just said, everybody's married. They got married first. No, because Halo wasn't, you know. But anyway, they're married and they have babies. So it's just like he's the one that has the baby out of wedlock, quote unquote. And he just doesn't want to tell them. And plus it's with who it's with. And Ledge told him a long time ago that he needed to cut that girl off and let it be that. But he thought he had everything under control. And it's just like, you know. When I want to fuck with her, I'll fuck with her. And when I don't, you know, she do her thing, I do mine, and we good. And, of course, Bianca, her name is Bianca. I don't know if I said that, but, yes. She's like, oh, you still didn't tell them? Of course you didn't. You're not going to keep us a secret. And, you know, da-da-da-da-da. And he's like, man, please shut up. Like, damn, you just had a baby, and now you on my case. And you knew what it was already, like, I'm here for my son, and I'm going to be here for my son. I just haven't told him yet because I'm not ready to. And why are you worried about if my family knows about him or not? I'm here, right? Like, I'm his dad. I'm here with my son. So it's like, what are we talking about here? And, you know, they do this tit for tat arguing, and it's like he just had the baby. And he's like, you know, you need to shut up and get some, re you know, relax. You just had a baby, and I'll be over here doing chest to chest with him and we good but because they can't stop arguing he immediately puts his son down and is like you know what i'm leaving i can't do this and it's just like now law 
baby, you cutting out already? You could easily ignore her. You ain't got to respond to everything. You could block her out and spend time with your son. But um, after he leaves, he's like, you know, call me when they're discharging you and I'll come get y'all. And it's like, this nigga goes and leaves and goes to... And I don't think I mentioned in the previous episode. Um, Ledge and Law, they had it rough growing up with their mother by themselves. And that's where a lot of his what I want to say, anger and emotions come from, because it's like, we were struggling, not knowing where our next meal was coming from, and our father was basically like a few streets over, and both of them being none the wiser, so while he loves his mom with all his heart, he's upset with her, because it's like, we could have had a father all this time, but, and not too much on a mama, not too much on a mama, Because it's like, she thought, like, that was a one-night thing, and I'm not trying to mess up their beautiful family, so it will just be me and my kids over here. But, you know, when she knew she was passing away, she left a letter telling them the truth and who their father was. So that's how they all got together. And, but he's still struggling with that now. Even with him being as close as he is to Liam and Mama Lord, because him and Ledge, they call her Mama it's either Mama or Mama Laura, you know. So they got that close bond with her. Um, but when they were growing up, they had cousins. I know one name is Malachi, and I forgot the other one's name. But it's two M cousins that they grew up with. And it's like a city that's three hours away. So anyway, he ends up over there. Like, you know, he need to release some stress, and he need to link up with his family. And he do that. And so he ends up at the strip club. And this is where he meets our new leading lady. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. It's not her. Praise God. Excuse me. And um, what is her stripper name? I believe her stripper name is Siren. Yeah. So we're introduced to Siren. Now her, what is her real name? Baby, why am I drawing a blank? What is her real name? It's K something. Fuck. Oh my God. Try to in my head and not my heart because I'm going off the top of my head and I'm slightly drunk. But just rock with me here. If you read the book, you know where we're going. Um, so you first of all, shout out to Gray Huffington, because baby, the way she broke down how Miss Siren did her flips and her tricks and how she commanded the crowd and it's like do a flip spread it open i said come on captivate the crowd because i was like now baby i can't do none of this but i i i'm here for it so um you know law he like i um i'll pay you for your time how much is it boom 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 whatever and Because she tells all her people that want any time with her, you have to pay to play. And so he dropped, what, 10 stacks? And they spent the night together having amazing sex. And then it's like, you know, he gets up. No, she got up and left. And, um, you know, he woke up in the morning like, damn, usually I'm the one that leaves. And I was the one that was left. And so, you know, they go on about their business. It's a couple months later and she is in Channing. I forgot to say, yeah, the city is Channing. Um, visiting Baisley because she's Baisley's cousin. I was like, okay, let me get the storyline together. Yes, um, she's Bailey's cousin visiting the baby, and come to find out, Miss Baisley is pregnant again. And at first, she's trying to keep it on the low because uh, Miss Siren going to tell her, baby, you looking a little puffy. She like, excuse me, bitch? She like, girl, you know our waist is what waist with a big old ass. And you looking a little chubby around the stomach, baby. So what? what's up with that? And again, Baisley tries to deny it. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, you know, basically, it's a back and forth. Like, girl, stop playing. I can tell that there's something there so what's up and at first she doesn't want to say anything she's like you know i don't want to tell 
um, Lake right now. And Lake is like, why? You know, it's not, a, oh, because she said something about it being an accident. And Lake is like, nah, that's an intentional baby, just like the first one was intentional. So I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and she's like, what? For real? And he's like, yeah, I know what I was doing. And I want another baby. And, you know, we going to do this. And so it's just like, oh, excuse me. Um, and Clue is her name. The fact that it popped up like that, excuse me, her name is Clue. Um, because I don't want to call her Siren this whole review. And so she's like, girl, please. And we have Lake, uh, not Lake, Lord, Law. But speak, okay, sorry, let's pull over. Um, because I'm all over the place. Lake and Law, like, baby, they are two peas in a pot. They are the same twin flames. Uh, right, they should have been twins instead of uh, Law and Lidge. Baby, twin flames. Them two get together and they act a fool. But anywho, um, Law is at this restaurant meeting up with a girl who's been calling him and wants some of, uh, some of his time. And so, it's like, as soon as he gets to the table, he's just like, she's so clingy. He don't even know why he's there, but he know why, because he's going to bust her down, because she's easy. Woo, woo, woo. So he gets up, like, because they talking for a second. He's like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. So he gets up to go to the bathroom, and, you know, his his heart beating irregular. And he thought Bianca was there, because he said this only happens when he's in the vicinity of Bianca. But lo and behold, it's Miss Clue on a date. So he walks up and ba- makes the man get up on the table. And she's like, you won't have to cover the cost of making my date leave. You know my time is money. So what's up? And so he uh, takes her phone. And it's some type of app where almost like a cash app type thing where you put the two phones by each other and he automatically sent her 10 bands. So it's just like, so what are we talking about here? So you with me for the night. Let's go. And so she's like, okay, whatever. Boom, boom. So they end up together once again. And she tries to leave out. He like, nah, we not having that. Um, and he tried, <laughs> he was trying to tell her, you know, like I've been thinking about you all this time. He, uh, excuse me. She's like, nigga, you was here on a date. You ain't thought nothing about me after that night. Stop fucking playing with me. And you know, her thing is she's a woman with a broken heart she tried love it did not work for her she's not doing that shit again and it's like her friends and her family they try to bring up her past relationship and she's like basically that nigga is lord baltimore do not say his name he who shall not be named do not bring that motherfucker up around me i don't want to talk about it and so they do this back and forth thing where (sighs) Even Law admits that he's not trying to be in a relationship. But, you know, basically he can't stay away from her. Because she tells him, like, you're not looking to be tied down. And he's like, you're right, I'm not. So she's like, so what the fuck are we doing then, my guy? And he's like, I don't know. I just can't leave you alone and I'm not going to. I want you to be mine and you're going to be. So he's chasing her this whole time. And it's at one point. Um, Clue had got tickets to a game and she invited Lake and Law and um was it supposed to be Lyric and it was like somebody else was supposed to come but they couldn't make it so Lake ended up inviting Law and um because this whole time she would not give him her name. So when she shows up to the game when Clue shows up to the game and she sees Law sitting next to Lake it's like Oh, fuck, of course, he's related to them. He just has that vibe anyway, even though he has a different last name. And so that's when Basley calls her clue and Law realizes her name. Um, But what was that? So he like, oh, so I finally get to know your real name. And, you know, like, basically, you're not leaving here getting away from me. And so, of course, because they're in her city, he was riding with Lake and, like, caught a ride with his cousins them so he didn't have a car and he gets in her car driving her car and kind of find out it was a a old gift from a rapper that used to pay for her time this 
when I tell y'all that man found out that that uh, car was given to her by that man, he told, he like, all right, hold on tight. We finna go do a few things. He makes a few phone calls. They riding out to uh, the middle of no fucking where. And he tells her, you know, get out the car. And she gets out the car to go to his cousin's car that's there waiting. He blew the motherfucking car up, y'all. Let's talk about that. I'm just, she wasn't mad enough for me. I'm sorry. I don't care how much that... Because he walked up to her, said some boss shit. Like, I, I have another one sitting in your driveway right now. Don't ever have me sitting in another nigga car that, uh, you know, that somebody else paid for. Some type of shit like that. And she was turned on by that. I'm like, nah, nah, fuck all that. Like, nigga... You blew up my motherfucking car. I don't even know you like Like, we having fun. This is cute or whatever. But, nigga, that's my motherfucking car. Let's talk about You blew my shit up. Like, you drove my shit out here. Had me get out. And his cousin just hands him a gasoline tank. And you poured that shit on my car. And you blew up my motherfucking Fucking car. <laughs> mm, I just can't. I'm like, what the fuck? But anyway, you know, um, so at one point, Law is talking to Lake. This was like early in the book, and he lets it slip that he has a son. And Lake is pissed. He's like, man, I hit you in your motherfucking jaw. And why you didn't tell us about it? Because it's like, of course. The Eisenbergs are big on family. It's like, baby, we family. We do everything together. We tell everybody, tell each other everything. Like, fuck is you talking about? Bring the baby over. So then one day when he has his son, he comes up to the house. And, of course, Lake knows, but he hasn't said anything to anybody. Because basically, it's like, that's your business. You're going to tell them when you're ready. And Luca is like, whose baby is that? And he's like, mine. Luca, like, you better be playing or I'm going to take that baby and I'm kicking you the fuck out of here because what do you mean? And so, you know, he has to come in and tell everybody that he had a baby with Bianca. And Ledge was so disappointed. He's like, man, I know. No, because he called him on the phone. That's what it was when uh, Ledge found out because he was in the other city. And, you know, that twin vibe, it's just like, I ain't talked to you. What you doing? What's up? And he just blurs out. He like, I got a baby. And at first, Led just, he didn't believe it. Then he like, by who? And he's like, Bianca. He's like, man, click and hung up on it. And he's like, I ain't got time for you nor your bullshit. Um, and it was a guy, that was the thing. I don't know how I forgot this. But um, in the beginning, like after Bianca had had the baby, he was leaving out the hospital. He ran into a nigga he not really cool with. And the guy tells him, you know, my girl just had a baby, a baby girl. So it didn't click for him. You know, like he said his girl and it's a baby girl. And Bianca, although she ain't my girl, she had a baby boy. So that's whatever. But um, I believe it's the, was it the cousin or was it Lake? But anyway, they show him, shows Law, the nigga IG page, um, and he see a baby back. He like, I remember that same damn baby back because that was in the hospital room, um, you know, when I went up there in Bianca's room. And so it's clicking for him that little baby Brandon might not be his baby. And everybody like, nigga, we been told you that. Like, first of all, when we pick up the baby and hold the baby, we don't get that vibe. The baby don't look like us because everybody looks like Daddy Liam in some type of way. Even though Ledge and Law are um, darker complected, they still look like the daddy. It's like, nigga, he don't have our genes. Now, let me tell you something. I know certain people may feel a way, but the way Daddy Liam talked about that baby, I, I ain't mad. I'm sorry. I just, I don't care. He's like, man, that little funny ass looking baby, that baby don't belong to us, and I don't give a fuck who feel any type of way about it. And so, uh, Law confronts Bianca, and of course, he gets the DNA test done, but it's like, but you was, and I never understand. It's like, bitches out there who are pinning children on men, you would want to be, uh, what is it? 
the word is escaping me. But I don't think you would want to cause friction and like be on the nigga head and hound him and be a terrible ass baby mama when you know that that's not that man's baby. You would want to be agreeable. I think that's the term I'm looking for. You would want to be agreeable. You know, not make too much of a wave. Just like, uh, oh, this nigga paying for the baby. And, pop, well, you know, of course, with the type of money they have, um, it's like he's paying for the baby and for my lifestyle. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to mind my business. But no, Bianca was a ratchet ass baby mama, constantly closed calling him, worrying about what he was doing, and just being terrible. It's like, bitch, what's not clicking, Steven? Anyway, so, uh, and the one part that pissed me off, well, not the one part, but it's like, at one point, he at her house, because, you know, he spent his time with the baby, because I believe she's breastfeeding, so I was like, she can't be too far from the baby. Anyway, and she gets down there. She's like sucking his dick. But he gets a text from Clue. Because at that point, the relationship was official. Because, you know, he broke my girl down. And um, as soon as she he read the text, knowing it's from her, he went down. And Bianca was like, what the fuck is this? This never happened, you know. And um, come to find out, she flew into the city to celebrate his birthday. But when he walked into the house, that's when, you know, Luca was like, whose baby is that? Give me the baby and you get the fuck out. She was there to surprise him for his birthday. So her finding out that he had a baby that he had basically hidden from the world, you know, she was heartbroken. She's like, I would have loved you anyway, but you never brought this up to me. You never said anything about this. So it's like, nigga, fuck you. And I'm out. And she was like really heartbroken. This caused the whole scene. And he kind of, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but it's like he kind of roughed her up a little bit to where Luca came out and basically like, nigga, back up off her. And he's like, man, I'm not, I would never. He's like, that's not the point. They'll back up and give her space. And so she leaves and it's like, nigga, I don't want nothing to do with you. You broke my heart and you already knew the bullshit that I've been through. So fuck you. Um, And so he goes to her house like one day she gets off work come to her house her shit all broken into and it's this nigga on the couch and this is after he found out that the baby was not his and you know she walk in the house she's like can you get the fuck out he like the baby not mine she's like what the fuck that got to do with me law whether the baby was yours or not you still kept this shit for me and she's like let me ask you something while you was over there did anything happen and he has to reveal the fact that she went down on him. And she's like, of course. So that was something else. Strike two against your ass, nigga. The fuck out. <laughs> so, you know. And I forgot, he went to some, he went to a couple people for advice. And they had to tell him, like, you know, leave that girl alone. You got to step back and let her breathe. You just constantly own her, own her, own her. You know, this shit is never going to get healed and get fixed. And so he had to realize that he had to step back and he didn't contact her anymore. He like, he let it go until what, like a couple months or a month later. I forgot how long it was. You know, he at home wallowing in self pity and Clue shows up. It's like she had time to think. She talked to Baisley. She talked to a friend of hers and she realized she loves law and she doesn't want to let the relationship go. And so she um, lets herself into his house and it's like, I love you. I don't want to let this go. You know, we, 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 we here. And she sets it up to still celebrate his birthday because it's like, even though the last time I was here trying to celebrate your birthday, that bullshit popped off. But we get a redo and she had made him go upstairs while she set it up. And when she came down, I mean, when he came down. He just stood there. She's like, you know what? What's the matter? And he said, no one has ever done anything like this for me. And it goes back to his mom and how he says, you know, I love her so much, but I'm pissed. Because she held 
my father away from me and he was right there and you know of course when they found out that they were family they they're showered with love now but it still doesn't make up for the many years that he had to go without so where you know um in ledge's story where he embraced the family with open arms and he embraced love with you know he was ready for all of that where because i don't want to call him like the sensitive one but he was just more open to things whereas law was closed off he's like i don't believe in love i don't know what the fuck that is i don't want none of that to where he's coming around to the idea um but yeah that's the end because both of them said no children they don't want any children um i actually believe i think law got a vasectomy because he's like no no thank you (laughs) you know um but yeah i think they got engaged so they're gonna be married and this story ends with malachi the cousin who he was married but and let me tell one more time miss huffington don't fucking scare me like that again now i thought because the way he was upset at the end because like they was getting ready to go to a funeral I said, Lord, the cancer done got mama. Lord, the cancer done took mama this. She said it a real good, baby. Um, But no, it was actually the cousin Malachi's wife. One night, like the one night he went out with the fam because she basically told him, like, nigga, please get out the house. All you do is come home with your family and you don't do nothing. Go hang out with uh, your brother and your cousins. Like, please get out. And then one night he did go out, somebody broke into the house and killed his wife in front of, uh, is it their daughter? Yeah, I believe their daughter. So the next story is his story. And I was like, damn, we could go to the other brother first, you know, give, basically set him up with a love story, let Malachi uh, grieve a little bit. Because if we jump straight into his wife was killed and he find, uh, excuse me, find another woman that quick. I don't know, but hey, I'm not Miss Huffington. This her world, and I'm just living in it because I'm going to read whatever she put out. Because I'm telling you something, when I read, when, that was the end of the story, so now I'm just talking now. But when I read, uh, what was that? The first book was Luca because I started in order. But when I say I went back, I think I've read every book by her because they're short, but they're good. And like I said, uh, Gray Huffington be love i'm pretty sure there's another author on my list i just can't remember who it is right now but be love and gray huffington for sure i'm guaranteed a happily ever after and that's what i want and i love it so yeah i went back and read everything a lot of people don't like that but i love it it's like i can go from dark romance to a whole bunch of other shit and happily ever afters Cause I hate books that end on like cliffhangers. And anyway, we're not about that. Anyway, Gray Huffington, you did a great job. I am enjoying this series. Thank you for your writing. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Peace and blessings, my beautiful people.